During today's ceremony, Lieutenant General David N. Miller Jr. will transfer command of Space Base Delta I from Colonel David G. Hansen to Colonel Kenneth F. L. Clock. The commander of troops is the vice commander, Space Base Delta I, Schriever, Colonel Randy C. Combs, and the flag bearer is senior enlisted airman, Space Base Delta I, Chief Master Sergeant Christopher M. Clark. I am Staff Sergeant Natalie Rubinak, and it is my honor to guide you through today's event. At this time, please silence and place your cell phones on airplane mode or turned off so that our public affairs team can stream live video of the event without disruption. For the purpose of today's ceremony, the hangar will be treated as an outdoor area. As a reminder of outdoor ceremony protocols, military in uniform should wear headgear even while seated and render salutes during the appropriate times. During the playing of ruffles and flourishes and as the generals march, military members should face and salute the presiding general and the official party and hold their salutes until the music has ended. During the singing of the national anthem, it is appropriate for our civilian guests in military and civilian attire to place their right hand over their heart. Civilian attendees should remove any hats during the national anthem. Thank you. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of ruffles and flourishes, the presentation of the colors, and the national anthem, followed by the invocation. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's a red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'd like to invite you, if you'd like to join me, for a brief word of prayer. Almighty God, your steadfast love never ceases, your mercies never end. They are new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Lord, we give you thanks today for the peaceful transition of power as one colonel relinquishes command and another bears its weight and calling. Father, I want to thank you today on behalf of Space Base Delta One for giving us Colonel David Hansen. You enabled him to mightily lead the epicenter of space power. He sought to lead SBD-1 with purpose, conviction, wisdom, and charity. 
He poured out his heart for the betterment of the base and the blessings of those who have invested their lives at SBD1. He labored hard to sustain the great power which this installation commands. He has invested deeply to build the resources necessary to meet the demands of an ever-growing space force. And then he enabled to deliver the support necessary to empower the most lethal space force power the world has ever known. Lord, I have watched Colonel Hansen, day in and day out, give it his all with passion, charity, wisdom, and professionalism, always displaying servant leadership for the good of others and the betterment of SBD-1. And so I ask, Father, as Colonel Hansen recounts and rests from his later labors, that you may give him a special joy from your fatherly benevolence, as David saw your appointment as a great privilege to lead this installation. May he experience your satisfaction in him of a job well done. I also that ask that you would give to Mary, his loving bride, and Team Hansen a season of reprieve to enjoy their home in Colorado Springs as they transition from their years of military service. So now, Lord, as General Miller charges his appointee, Colonel Ken Clock, as Commander SBD-1, I ask that you, Lord, would embolden your servant. May you give him great wisdom to discern the right decision, discipline to manage the time both at work and at home, patience to trust the processes in place, and zeal for the mission, the members, and the families that make up Space Base Delta One. And please be with his precious bride, Jen, as she supports, counsels, and helps her husband. So Lord, mark this man with your anointing as he seeks to do what is pleasing in your sight, and help us who support the command that we may be faithful to our oaths, our creeds, and the sacred values of our forefathers for the betterment of the American people and the defense of this great nation. And I ask that all in the name of the one true God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem, the Front Range Honor Guard for presenting the colors, and to Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Hess for those inspiring words. We are privileged to have several distinguished guests here with us today. We ask that you please hold your applause until all have been mentioned. The spouse of the outgoing commander, Mrs. Mary Hansen, and their children, Charity, Eric, Brooke, and Kennedy. Also attending, Charity's boyfriend, Tyler Pacewalker. The spouse of the senior enlisted airman, Space Base Delta One, Mrs. Michelle Clark. The spouse of the incoming commander, Mrs. Jennifer Clock, and their son, Sergeant Mason Clock, United States Army. Colonel Clock's father, Fred Clock, and his stepmother, Carol Clock. Colonel Clock's sister, Kathy Rowe, and her husband, Daniel Rowe. Colonel Clock's nephew, Timothy Rowe, and his wife, Stephanie Rowe. Colonel Clock's nephew, Benjamin Rowe. Colonel Clock's niece, Elizabeth Rowe. Colonel Clock's mother-in-law, Betty Jean Wilson. Colonel Clock's brother-in-law, Dustin McFadden, and his girlfriend, Kay Long. Colonel Clock's friends and special guests, Mr. Jonathan Pace and his spouse, Mrs. Morgan Pace, and their daughter, Madison. Mr. Zach Farr and his spouse, Mrs. Ashley Bird. We are also honored to be joined by Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Headquarters Space Operations Command, Chief Master Sergeant Caleb Lloyd. Command Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Space Command, Chief Master Sergeant Jacob Simmons. Deputy Commander General, Transformation, Headquarters, Space Operations Command, Brigadier General Kyle Paul and his wife, Jennifer. Deputy Commanding General, Support, Headquarters, Space Operations Command, Dr. Brian Keel. Former Deputy Commander and Director of Operations, Combined Joint Task Force, Space Operations, Major General Brooke Leonard, United States Air Force, retired. Representing the United States Senator Michael Bennett, Pikes Peak Regional Director, Ms. Natasha Hudson. Representing Representative Doug Lamburn, Colorado's 5th District, Mr. Dennis Heisey. Representing the City of Colorado Springs, Senior Advisor, Government and Military Engagement, Mrs. Sally Clark. Representing the City of Cripple Creek, Director of Marketing and Events, Mrs. Tracy Bennett. Commander, 10th Air Base Wing, United States Air Force Academy, Colonel Amy Glisson. Garrison Commander, Fort Carson, Colonel Sean Brown. 
Garrison Command Sergeant Major Fort Carson, Command Sergeant Major Jason Mortensen. Director, National Security Space Institute, Mr. James Moshkit. Commander, Space Base Delta II, Colonel Heidi Dexter. IMA to the Commander, Space Delta II, Colonel Deborah Van Caster. Commander, Space Delta IX, Colonel Ramsey Horn. Commander, Space Delta XI, Colonel J. Steingold. Vice Commander, Space Base Delta I, Peterson, Colonel Kevin McMahon. President and CEO, Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC, Ms. Jonna Reeder Kleemeyer. Executive Director, Home Front Military Network, Mrs. Kate Hatton. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to all other commanders, chiefs, senior enlisted leaders, community leaders, directors, military personnel, friends, and family joining us both today in person and virtually. Please join me in welcoming the Commander, Space Operations Command, Lieutenant General David N. Miller, Jr. Thank you, thank you. Well, good afternoon. We can do better than that. Space Space Delta One, we got trucks out here, we got local community leaders, a bunch of other commanders. We'll try it one more time just to make sure everybody's awake for the proceedings as we begin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There you go. It's amazing when you direct applause and things. Booyah, there we go. That's what winning sounds like. Um, so really, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity to be here today. It's a special day. In particular, I want to say thanks to the community leaders who've joined us, the commanders, senior enlisted leaders, um, senior civilians who have taken the time to be here today. I think it speaks volumes to the impact that the Peterson Schrieber Garrison team has on this local community. Um, nowhere else do we have, we've only got really within Space Operations Command two space-based deltas. Uh, Heidi's here representing the team up at Buckley, um, and obviously David's here. And when you consider how much of our combat-ready space power is derived from the strength of this team, it's no wonder that you have so many people represented here. So uh, I want to thank all of you for coming today. Um, you know, the, the, the title of commander, that one word duty title as we call it, should not be taken lightly. Um, it's a culmination of really years of lessons learned. We give people this opportunity because we want to see what they're going to do with it, not because of what they've done. And um, David, we'll talk more about him in a minute, but David has done an incredible amount in the two years that he's been in command. Um, and I'm really excited. I was there the day we decided we were going to put Ken in charge of this, give him this opportunity. <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with it as well. Um, between them, six decades of military service under their belt, multiple leadership opportunities. And they understand what I'll share with the, the SBD-1 team. That command really is not about maintaining the status quo. Literally, we have such good people, no one could show up and maintain the status quo. That's how good the processes, the people are, the subordinate command elements. Command is about elevating our commitment and the performance of the mission, but also elevating the personal and professional development of our, of our guardians and airmen. Um, and it's through that lens that I asked the team at SPD-1 to consider this ceremony that we're going to have here shortly. Um, this ceremony will ensure no gap in the leadership of this formation. Command is a statutory requirement. There are literally legal responsibilities that commanders have. And I think often it goes underreported how much we invest in them to take care of what America's moms and dads have given them, their most valuable thing, and that's their kids, uh, in many cases to serve. Um, so as you watch this transfer and this change of command, remember that command is that nexus of accountability for mission outcomes and for people outcomes. And that is the lens through which we value and view people who are given this opportunity. It is why only an elite few ever get selected to be an 06 commander in the Space Force. Um, as I've said on a couple of other occasions, we did Ramsey's chain of command. I've got just under 250 lieutenant colonels in Space Operations Command. Um, at any given time, 
uh, 40 of them or less will be operational commanders. Um, any year, and we're going to do it here in the next couple of months, we'll only select five to be 06 commanders. And actually, every year, the way they're staggered right now, only one will get the opportunity to be the major installation commander or the garrison commander. So um, when we say that these ladies and gentlemen, these guys are an elite company, there really is only a few. And if you look at the program, they've only got two predecessors before David, um, Shea Warakomsky and Jim Smith, and both have gone on to do some great things for us and continue to do it for our service. Um, so as good as David has been, and we'll talk more about it in a minute, I want to start with the family because we all know mission success actually starts from the command team. The command team is made up of the vice commander or the deputy, the command senior enlisted leader, in my case, Chief Master Sergeant Caleb Lloyd. It's also made up of the spouse. Um, we expect and demand a lot because our military families expect and demand a lot from the key spouse. Um, we also expect and demand a lot from the kids who serve. Um, so to Charity, Eric, Brooke, and Kennedy, thank you for supporting your dad. Um, 13 PCSs is what I've been told, numerous global travels. I was actually had the opportunity to look on Facebook. You guys got some good travels in place, that's good. And some good plans coming up uh, for what's coming. For those who are online, Joyce and Mike, um, and then the dozens of family and friends, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for the support you've given this family. Thank you for the support you've given this team. It is no easy task to be a military family in today's society, particularly as we go towards an era where we see more and more belligerent activity on the part of great powers that must be counted by the United States military. We continue to ask a lot from this military community and it's because of your support that these men and women who serve are able to do it. If you'll bear with me, I'd like to spend a moment thanking one person in particular, and that's Mary Hansen. So Mary, could you come up here for a minute? I know I'm surprising you. This is how you do it when you give me a microphone, things are gonna change. So David's gonna get her. So this is Mary Hansen, ladies and gentlemen. She, this is the spouse of the clinic. Twenty-five years of marriage. Um, we already talked about the 13 PCSs. Uh, key spouse mentor uh, multiple times throughout our command tour. Here, a thrift shop volunteer. I don't know that there was an Airman Leadership School graduation or something that she didn't participate in and support. Um, she continues to donate donuts to our defenders. I'm not sure that that makes Major Foote and his compatriots very happy, but it ensures that we do PT by giving them donuts. Um, I guess the, the thing I'll say is, you know, 30 years ago, plus David gave an oath to serve, but families never really actually get an opportunity to give that oath. They're usually witnessing it. And Mary's been here for 25 as a part of this team. We owe her a lot. Um, and I'm gonna do something here that's pretty rare. Um, by the powers that are vested in me, we're actually gonna promote Mary Hansen to Brigadier General in the United States Space Force. Now, mind you, I'm not sure I have any authority to do anything I'm about to do, so <laughs> this may not actually last very long for some, but um, I think it's important and it'll say a lot. I've gone through other commands and I've said in the past that um, at times, and as I've changed command, there's multiple command tours for myself, sometimes my wife needs to remind me that I'm no longer commanding anything after I leave. <laughs> and that um, my, what she, I think she usually, uh, my opinions are interesting and not necessarily compelling on the home front. Um, so we wanna give Mary the formal charge and the designated rank and authority over the home team. So if you would, I think you have the appropriate words we're gonna say. Um, we're gonna present Mary with something here in a minute and then I got something for David just to make sure he gets the message. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is actually an occasion where I'm going to need you to stand up. Thank you, General Miller. Proclamation. Whereas Mrs. Mary Hansen is recognized as Honorary Brigadier General in Space Operations Command and whereas her over 25 years of dedicated service and exceptional leadership has made a lasting and profound impact on the lives of airmen, guardians, and their families, and whereas her hard work in building a loving and supportive household has enabled a resilient and courageous family, and whereas through her long tours, 
frequent moves, and constant demands, she remained unwavering, representing the very best of our American spirit. And, whereas, she has demonstrated a daily ability to exude patience, perseverance, and selflessness during the uncertainty and unpredictability of military life, answering the call to serve each and every day. Now, therefore, I, David N. Miller, Jr., Commander of Space Operations Command, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby officially award Honorary Brigadier General Mary Hansen full charge of Team Hansen to ensure all decisions, including, but not limited to, financial stewardship, leisure management, community engagement, and home maintenance with tasking authority over all personnel therein as you see fit to accomplish the mission. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 11th day of July in the year of our Lord, 2024. In all seriousness, um, you know, we got to take some time. Thanks again, Mary. Your, 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 your passion and commitment has been great. It was great to have you and David over for dinner last week. Um, we'd be nowhere without these military families. Um, it's appropriate that we recognize them first before we recognize the accomplishments of the member because he knows he'd be nowhere without you. Um, as the SPD-1 commander, David has led uh, really our largest formation at the 06 level, 3.6 thousand guardians, airmen, and civilian warriors across 11 time zones. 97% of his formation is airmen. Um, we would be nowhere without this Department of the Air Force team. As you guys may or may not know, as we stood up the service and the direction was to keep it lean, we rely and continue to rely on the phenomenal airmen, frankly the best airmen the Air Force has to offer, to do our Defense Force work our force support work, our civil engineering work, you name it, anything it takes to actually make sure the mission gets done is done by United States Air Force Airmen. Um, and we owe them a significant gratitude. And they do it not just here at Peterson and Shriver and at Cheyenne Mountain. They're doing it right now at Pitufit Greenland on Maui, which is actually there's a fire um, that they're, they're contending with for the emergency services team out there um, off the side of Haleakala. Um, they're doing it in uh, Kayana Point Hawaii, and Hawaii. They're also doing it in New Boston and New Hampshire and across multiple other installations. Um, right now, 10, 10 deltas of only, I think, 15 that the Space Force has are reliant on the Guardians, Airmen, and Civilian Warriors that are a part of SPD-1. 22 GSUs, 18.4 thousand people coming in to work here every day on this thing we call Peterson Shriver Garrison. Um, it's incredible what you do. Your work is not just mission critical. If you actually have dealt with, as many commanders have sometimes, and it's, it's on nights and weekends and gets underreported, your work is life-saving and life-changing sometimes. Whether that's the medical care you provide, uh, the behavioral health services, you name it, uh, we would be nowhere without the guardians and airmen of SPD-1 ensuring that the mission can get done. They lead the base operation support, the combat support functions that we have, the garrison force support services. Um, it is incredible what this team does, and I just want to say thanks to them. Thank you, and give them a round of applause if you wouldn't mind. Now, David's a graduate of Iowa, of Iowa State University, which I think is fine. Um, he's a Notre Dame fan. Also fine. We've got some New Yorkers here. We appreciate the value of true education in my state, um, which is funny because I actually went to college in Pennsylvania. So, um, 
but uh, in all seriousness, he, he's done a great job. Uh, he had the opportunity, I saw in his record, to be in the ROTC detachment at uh, Notre Dame. Got to see some great football games, I'm sure. Uh, but also was the Commandant of Cadets uh, doing a phenomenal job. And then went right back as he came back in, immediately selected you get to go to school and command, and you're just uh, off to the races. In his 30 years of command, eight, or 30 years of service, eight have been in command. Um, and he led this team phenomenally, managing $285 million in resources a year, $1.1 billion in contracts annually. He led the Peterson, and I can't list everything, so I got, because I got to wrap it up and it's hot. And trust me, in this uniform, it's hot. Uh, the only thing that's saving you from seeing the sweat is how tightly wound this hat is on my big head right now, but it's up there. Um, he led the Peterson Shriver team to be the Commander in Chief's Installation Excellence Award in 2023. Only six installations in the Department of Defense were given this recognition, and two in the Department of the Air Force. So this team deserves a lot of credit. His command responsibilities extend to be the primary supporter for one of my major roles as the Combat Forces proponent. As many of you may know, whereas many of our formations in the Army or the Air Force or the Marines depart their installations in order to go fight. We fight from our installations. Our installations are part of the weapon system. That's why we focus on our weapon system infrastructure. I was just on Capitol Hill this week uh, talking to members and staff across the Armed Services Committees. They recognized David's excellence and actually said, I told Ken this earlier, the new guy better be as good as the last guy. <laughs> so you got a lot of work to do to build those relationships, Ken. Um, he secured a grant for about over a million dollars for off-base childcare to ensure that our families had access to care, particularly as we came out of COVID and the ability and support inside our CDCs waned as people chose other opportunities like many did in, in the COVID time. Um, he is the principal advocate with the Danish Ministry of Defense to change Thule's name from Thule Air Base to p 2 and he secured a 10-year base maintenance contract worth over a billion dollars, as I said. Uh, his accomplishments have been significant. He has done a great job, and he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done. Um, if you guys will indulge me for a minute, we're going to give him a quick booyah. Um, as I've told other audiences, uh, the Army's got HUA, the Marine Corps coughs as they say HUA, um, the Navy, I'm not sure what they say to be candid with you, um, and I think the Air Force just says hua. So we modified it to be distinct for booyah. So what I'd like to do is, you saw the flag is blowing pretty good here. Let's blow it back that way. If you guys will join me and to the team Hansen, who's done a phenomenal job on the count of three, we'll give them a booyah to say thank you. Are you with me? All right. One, two, three. Booyah! Oh, that was good. Man, defenders are coming. All right. Now as Colonel Hansen departs, SPD-1 is going to be in great hands. Uh, Colonel Ken Clock and his family um, have been here at Peterson, but they're ready to join the SPD-1 family now. We welcome Ken. We welcome his wife, Jen, who's sitting up here in the front row. Thank you for your love and support to Ken for 21 years of marriage, 26 years together. Where's Mason? There he is, right there. History and legacy of service in Ken's family. His son, Mason Clock, came down from Alaska to join us here today. Um, he's transitioning into the counterintelligence career field. Um, you will hear more about this career field growth as we enter an era of great power competition. Um, and he represents some of the finest that we have. I know you want to join the Space Force. I know you do. The Army is pausing the transfers right now, I think, because we've taken so many good ones. But when you're ready, you call me. We could use you. Um, to the rest of his family, I could list them but she already did. I don't know that there's anybody in the Clock family who's not here today. Let's just do this and say, from the SPD-1 team, welcome to the Clock family. We thank you and we appreciate you. Now, Ken's an interesting one. 34 years of military service, 13 in the Army Reserve as an armor officer, 19 in the active duty Army. Um, he brings the absolute warrior spirit and focus that we need to this team right now. He's been in the Space Force for two years, but he's been doing space for 18 years. Um, I met him probably six years ago um, when I was doing the stand-up, task to stand-up United States Space Command. Ken was in the Future Ops team, I think, in GIFSIC, 
the Joint Force Space Component Command at the time, and I could see the accomplishments that he had, but also I could see the potential in his leadership at that time. Um, we have picked the right person to lead these phenomenal guardians and airmen. I have no doubt. His career in space was in 2006 as a current ops branch chief. He has deployed twice to combat environments um, in Iraq. His strategic vision and leadership, the thing we count on for leaders, helped establish U.S. Space Command, as I mentioned before, as part of our team and set the vector of where we needed to be in space operations. And he's just leaving our premier institute for the development of guardians in the National Security Space Institute where he increased student throughput 186%, actually added courses for me as the United States Spacecom J3 in my previous job, opened up the NSSI to 58 partner nations and built a course specifically focused on great power competition and the need to compete and deter major adversaries in an environment like we'd see today. Um, this is a time of great consequence, ladies and gentlemen. It requires leaders of great consequence. We are saying farewell to one, we are welcoming another. Ken, you are still the combat arm of decision. We are looking for this team to continue that focus in the United States Space Force. You have a distinction of only two people in Space Operations Command and one of them sitting here is your battle buddy, Heidi Dexter. We cannot do the mission without you. So I am very comfortable with where we are headed, but I'm even more excited about what you're gonna do that I don't know about. Um, booyah to you and the family. We'll do a big one as you wrap it up for, for everybody else. But great job for all you've done so far. Welcome to this team. Welcome to Team Clock. And I look forward to seeing what you're going to start and we'll get to done today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. I think we're going to give David an award. Thank you, General Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the Legion of Merit to Colonel Hansen. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Legion of Merit to Colonel David G. Hansen for meritorious service. Colonel David G. Hansen distinguished himself by ex exceptional meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as commander Space Base Delta One, Peterson Space Force Base, Colorado, from 11 July 2022 to 11 July 2024. Colonel Hansen's exemplary leadership, innovation, and devotion to duty were critical in the direct oversight of 3,600 airmen and guardians supporting the United States Space Force's most diverse organization, delivering key strategic effects to two combatant commands, two field commands, 10 space mission deltas, and over 100 mission partners. He directly impacted the United States Space Force's growing mission, mission set by tirelessly synchronizing base operating support for seven hosted installations, 45 geographically separated units, and over 18,400 joint military and civilian personnel. Colonel Hansen's leadership was pivotal in the successful bed-down of United States Space Command, Space Systems Command, three mission deltas, and the provisional position, navigation, and timing delta. As commander, Colonel Hansen oversaw the renaming of Thule Air Base to Bidufik Space Base, an award of a, of a new $3.95 billion base maintenance contract. His team was instrumental in hosting the Canadian Prime Minister, Vice President of the United States, and President of the United States, recognized as the best Secret Service support in 15 years. Additionally, his leadership enabled sustainment in the strategically critical Arctic base. Additionally, he navigated the $37 million transition to base operating support information technology, successfully overcoming the two formal protests to the contract vital to strengthening cyber capabilities in space while divesting airmen to support higher priority missions across the Air Force. Finally, Colonel Hansen's unwavering dedication and leadership directly led to space-based Delta One's recep reception of the 2023 Commander-in-Chief's Excellence Award, one of six installations in the Department of Defense. 
The superior initiative, outstanding leadership, and personal endeavor displayed by Colonel Hansen culminated a long and distinguished career in the history of his country and reflect great credit among himself and the United States Space Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Colonel Combs will now place Space Base Delta I at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, Space Base Delta I, Colonel David Hansen. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here today. What a beautiful but warm Colorado day it is. I certainly never get bored of seeing the incredible Rocky Mountains and Pikes Peak. We are so blessed to live in such a beautiful area. Welcome to the representatives from Senator Bennett's and Representative Lamborn's offices, Sally Clark from Mary Yemi's office, and Ms. Bennett from the city of Cripple Creek. General Paul, Dr. Keel from Spock, thank you for being here. Chief Simmons, I think was supposed to make it. He's my good friend when we was technical sergeant, and uh, Simmons and Captain Hansen, we've come a long way. Retired General Brooke Leonard, thank you for being here. Welcome to our family. Some joining us online today, Mom, Mike, the Hansons, the O'Toole's, we miss you. Many of our close friends are here in attendance with us today and some joining online. I see Scott and Nikki Wahlberg, Kathy Fernagel, I think, is out there, Justin Wilcox, I did see that you made it. Sorry about the confusion. Glad that you're here. Sarah's at home with the kiddos. Rich and Minda Parsons, Matt and Kat uh, Rogers, one shout out to Cynthia Stephanus. Thank you be for being so good to us. Welcome fellow commanders, senior enlisted leaders, first sergeants, there we go, those who are joining us in person and those who are watching virtually. And of course, the incredible men and women of Space Space Delta I, who I've had the distinct opportunity to serve with over the past two exciting years. Lieutenant General Miller, thank you and thank you to General Whiting for the opportunity to lead such an amazing and dynamic organization. Your leadership, guidance, and direction have proved valuable and has guided us to where we are at today in Space Space Delta I, in Space Operations Command, in the United States Space Force, and truly the entire national security space enterprise. Thank you for pre presiding over today's ceremony. And now a big shout out to the team who put this event together, who first met with me in May and said, Sir, we are T-minus 65 days, which was hard to believe as time has moved by so quickly. Lieutenant Colonel Dave Axe Bullock, who led this great team, including Lieutenant Flaw, Master Sergeant Caudill, Master Sergeant Barnes, Master Sergeant Torres, Staff Sergeant Rose, Staff Sergeant Nicholas. Today's narrator, Staff Sergeant Rubiak from the Public Affairs Team, and our proffer, Staff Sergeant Salzman from the 21st Security Forces Squadron. And of course, to our 21st Defender Team, Master Sergeant Keelich, Master Sergeant Vasquez, Tech Sergeant Gorel, Technical Sergeant Modlin, Technical Sergeant Kellerman, Staff Sergeant Sullivan. Thanks to our awesome protocol team, Bob Orwig, Karen Fairbanks, Chris Roebuck, uh, Master Sergeant Solis, an equally awesome public affairs team, Connie Dillon, Master Sergeant Franks, and Steve Brady, and our fantastic chaplain and our chaplain team led by Lieutenant Colonel Doug Hess. A shout out to our multimedia team who is literally behind the curtain making things happen as they do for so many other events. And how about that unbelievable rendition of our national anthem, my master in Denver Murphy and the United States Air Force Academy Band. A round of applause again for everyone who had anything to do with this. Well, where do I start? Well, let's go back 26 months to May 3rd, 2022, when then Lieutenant General Whiting offered me this position in a parking lot of the former Leadership Development Center right here on Peterson Space Force Base. I was certain he meant to take command in 2023, because why would this job come open so late? But when I was corrected and he said, no Dave, I need to take command in 60 days, that set off a flurry of activity that officially started this adventure nearly two years ago. To our vice commanders, Colonel Sarah Babbitt, who I spoke with this morning on the phone, and Colonel Randy Combs, who's proudly our commander of troops, our medical group commander, Colonel Del Lofton, Christy, thanks for sticking around, and all arrived here about the same time that I did in the summer of 22. And everybody told us it was a disaster ready to happen with all new leadership starting new. But you know what? 
I wouldn't have it any other way. We gelled early, we set priorities, and we moved out. And our senior enlisted leadership, Chief Shevin Bakavar, our last command chief, and our current senior enlisted leader, Chief Doc Apodaca, up there in the back, senior enlisted Airman Chris Clark, proudly holding a flag. You three are fantastic, and I couldn't have asked more from you. You took guidance, ran with it, while giving me feedback on what was happening with our formations. That is how it's supposed to work. Thank you each for your leadership at our bases and our front range medics. You truly made a difference with our mission and our people. To our mission support directors who truly run our front range installations, Ms. Dorothy Choate here at Peterson, Mr. Craig Biondo at Cheyenne Mountain, Mr. John McKinley and Steve Stengel out, uh, out at Schriever. And to our former director of staff, Chuck Arnold, and our current Mr. A.P. A. Bellioni, you are all so passionate about what you do. We could have not accomplished all this that we did without your guidance, your leadership, and working with our squadron leadership teams and mission partners. Our group squadron and Delta staff leadership, as General Miller mentioned, are mostly airmen. You took a leap of faith joining a Space Force organization, knowing very little about space capabilities, employed in place missions, a different looking organizational structure, supporting not one, but two combatant commands on our bases. And you did all of that and so much more. Your can-do attitude is infectious, and your teams grew uh, and performed valiantly. Thanks to them for keeping all the national security critical missions running, despite the age of our facilities and infrastructure, along with Mother Nature, who dealt us several rare, rare weather occurrences. Thanks to your leadership over them, guiding and mentoring them, and taking care of those, their needs and theirs of their families. This truly is family business. To our geographically separated units, who lead alone but unafraid, Colonel Brian Capps and Colonel Jason Terry and their command teams at the former Thule, now Bidufik Space Base in Greenland, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Zessinger, now Lieutenant Colonel Devin Zufeld at New Boston Space Force Station, New Hampshire, Lieutenant Colonel Wags Wagenbach at the Maui Space Surveillance Complex, and Major Brandon Hammond and now Major Cody Felipe and Lance Hayashi at Kayena Space Points, uh, Kayena Point Space Force Station in Oahu. Your jobs are hard, I know, I've been there leading from a distance. You don't have everything you need at your locations, but you accomplish so much. Thank you for being amazing members of our Space Base Delta One team. To our front office teams, I had three fantastic senior executive officers in two years. Major Jake Byers, Captain Greg Cherrier, and our current exec, Captain Matt Chumacero, and the numerous hardworking junior execs, including currently Lieutenant Elliott, Lieutenant Pond, and Lieutenant Nacorda, plus our commander's action group, Major Jamie Alberon, Captain Aubrey Duty Tyson, and currently Major Kirsten Benecki, Captain Scott Min, and Major, uh, excuse me, Master Sergeant Brian Behrens. We kept you all busy, really busy, but you came through with super products and kept this Delta running smoothly. You all have fantastic futures ahead of you, and I thank you. To our administrative assistants, Ms. D. Fisher, I see you there, Ms. Ruth Lopez, Ms. Amber Haynes, and Ms. Vino, schedules changed, sometimes hourly. Our travel was often, often last minute and sometimes complicated. And all the other numerous tasks that you just took care of without a worry or a complaint, we all thank you. To my fellow commanders and leadership teams, thank you for your patience and trust in us that we will provide the services you require to perform your critical missions. I know bed down wasn't fast enough, but we have a plan for all of you to ensure your missions flourish here on our installations. To my Space Space and Space Launch Delta partners, Colonel Marcus Jackson, now Colonel Heidi Dexter, thanks for being here at Space Space Delta II. We work through common challenges with Space Force installations that are vastly different. Colonel Amy Glisson from the 10th Air Base Wing at USAFA, Colonel Sean Brown, Garrison Commander at Fort Carson, and their leadership teams, I appreciate your partnership and your friendship. All the best to both of you. To our partners at the City of Colorado Springs, El Paso County, and the State of Colorado, whether it was childcare options, spouse employment, or affordable housing, no challenge was too big for you to partner with us. To our elected officials, thank you for your support of our installations and to all the missions that we support. We are proud to call Colorado and Colorado Springs the home of military space. Mayor Yemi, thank you for your team's support. The Colorado Springs Airport, the Colorado Springs Police Department, the Military Affairs Council, Chamber of Commerce, Economic De Development Council, Defense Mission Task Force, and so many more. We thank you, Mayor, thank you for your friendship. And let's not forget our local nonprofits, Mount Carmel Veterans Service Center, 
Home Front Military Network, Colorado 30, Pikes Peak or Bus Radio, Citizen Soldier Connection, and so many more. We couldn't do any of this without your support of our teammates and their families. And most importantly, to my family, Mary, General, Charity, Eric, Brooke, and Kennedy, you have been through so much during my entire career, but the last two years have been difficult. Dad has had a fair bit of travel, and when I am home, there are always evening and weekend events. Thank you for accompanying me to many of those events. That was fun. And thank you for your support, your love, and your trust in me. You allowed me to spend the requisite time and focus my energies on this organization while also being a husband and a father. Your patience with me, my schedule, and time are not lost on me. Thank you for making this journey with me. I would not have it any other way. I love you all. And what an adventure it has been. But through it all, this team has persevered in ways you can only imagine. From working bed down requirements to virtually every Delta on Peterson and Shriver Space Force bases, to growing the servicing MAGCOM construct with Air Force Materiel Command, the ever-expanding Space Force footprint, and the additional mission sets, including the non-traditional missions such as HVDV and the National Airborne Operations Center bed downs, to the day-to-day -day facility and infrastructure challenges. How about hosting the president and vice president in successive years, plus the secretary of the Air Force, the chief of space operations, nearly every month? Partnering with our U.S. Air Force Academy and Fort Carson teammates on numerous initiatives to make this the best military city in the nation. The personnel, financial, spiritual, mental health, contracting, medical, security forces, logistics, force support, communications, legal, inspection, civil engineering, protocol, and public affairs teams continue to excel. You take care of business, and I'm so proud of your efforts and accomplishment. You took care of our teammates and mission partners' spiritual, medical, and personnel needs. You executed hundreds of millions of dollars in mission enhancements every year. You made critical and difficult giant mountain generator resourcing and refurbishments happen. You quickly responded and fixed numerous water main and fire suppression system break, breaks, HVAC and communication outages. Why? Because the missions must go on. You earned the Commander-in-Chief Installation Excellence Award, as mentioned before, one of only six installations in the entire Department of Defense. You identified a chilled water leak, took measures to ensure it did not affect space missions, expedited a switchgear project completion, and contracted pipe fixes. You opened and enhanced a beautiful Shriver Event Center. You hosted and excelled in multiple no-notice child development center inspections. You planned and executed multiple resiliency days for our team and mission partners teams to take a knee, spend time with each other, and grow as a unit. You executed two successful concert events, drawing over 7,000 fans combined. You took a wicked problem of Child Development Center excessive wait lists, hired new staff, created a culture where staff wanted to stay, opened classrooms, were innovative, came up with a solution, petitioned for funding, and executed contracts to cut wait lists 30% so far, and much more in the future. You are now the benchmark of the DOD. You took care of the medical and well-being of thousands of beneficiaries and always strove to enhance the quality of care for all. You created a culture of excellence at our fire departments, opening training with local military and city departments, and bravely responded when you were called. You even delivered several babies on our installations. You hosted dozens, if not hundreds, of DV tours at Cheyenne Mountain and used those to advocate for resourcing this unique and critical na national asset. You kept the, the Department of Defense northernmost installation running despite aging infrastructure, life-threatening weather, and supported NORAD and U.S. NORTHCOM and their Operation Noble Defender exercises at the Department of Defense's most remote location. You opened a Shriver Medical Clinic, $17 million expansion after four years of delays, tripling the size of the original clinic and bringing more services to Shriver Space Force Base. You planned and started construction of a Shriver Space Force Space Fitness Center, also tripling the size of the current footprint, the United States Space Force's number one MILCON from FY23. You took a disaster at New Boston Civil Engineering F Facility, fixed it with in-house support, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in contractor expenses. You kept the satellite command and control and space domain awareness missions running, performing thousands of critical satellite contacts around the clock, 
supporting numerous users worldwide. We're almost there. You managed a difficult deep well project at the northern tip of Oahu and advocated for support over a troubled contract. You managed local tensions from a freak diesel spill at the top of Mount Haleakala, came up with a plan amenable to local Maui residents, executed contracts, and made this a successful cleanup effort. You kept the Department of the Air Force's second busiest DV hub operating, supporting space, homeland defense, and U.S. Air Force Academy missions, and hosted dozens of DVs and tours, opening their eyes to the critical space missions at our installations. And finally, you partner with community, civic, and local mission partners to solve problems and find synergies in our missions. Bottom line, you are amazing. Sir, thank you again for the opportunity to lead this amazing team. They have proven themselves day in and day out that they will continue to lead the Department of the Air Force and truly the Department of Defense in what installation excellence really looks like. It has been the greatest honor of my career to be their commander. Colonel Clock, Ken, you're inheriting an eager, motivated, and innovative team. Take care of them, and they will amaze you. Space Space Delta One teammates, it has been real. Really hard sometimes, but absolutely rewarding. Keep fighting the good fight. Take care of Colonel Clock and your new leadership team. And as you, and as you have done for so long, keep these space and homeland defense missions running by taking care of each other. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for attending today's events and supporting our team and our mission. Aim high, Semper Supra. Commander, Space Space Delta One. Thank you, Colonel Hansen. Sir, at this time, and on behalf of the men and women of Space Base Delta One, we present Mrs. Mary Hansen with a bouquet of red roses, thanking her for all the support and devotion to the airmen, guardians, and families of Space Base Delta One. Red roses traditionally symbolize love, respect, and admiration. The openness and the flower's full bloom signifies the completion and fulfillment of service along with the achievements attained. The change of command ceremony has been a part of military history dating back to the 18th century during the reign of Frederick the Great of Prussia. During that time, organizational flags were created with color arrangements and symbols unique to a particular unit. To this flag, the soldiers would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When a change of command was to take place, the outgoing commander would pass the flag to his successor. This gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so all could witness their new commander assuming this position. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout generations of military history, and today it will serve as the key element of this military ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Lieutenant General Miller officiates the change of command. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Space Operations Command, Special Order Number, Gulf-24-06, dated 11 July 2024. By direction of the President, Colonel Kenneth F. L. Clock is appointed Commander of Space Base Delta One, effective the 11th of July 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. 
At this time, Colonel Clock will receive his first salute as the commander, Space Base Delta One. Please join me in welcoming the commander, Space Base Delta One, Colonel Kenneth F. L. Clock. I haven't even said anything yet, <laughs> but thank you. Good afternoon, family, friends, Space, De Space Base Delta One teammates, state representatives, community leaders, generals, chiefs, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, mission partners, and everyone joining us virtually. My first order of business is to share my gratitude for all those in attendance on this beautiful, albeit very warm, uh, Colorado day, and specifically those who helped make this event both a reality and a success. I'm humbled by this turnout. Thank you, Chaplain Hess, for your amazing invocation, as usual. Uh, thank you, Master Sergeant Denver, uh, for that wonderful rendition of the, nas the National Anthem, and to also to the Air Force Academy Band. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Rubinock, for narrating, and thank you, the entire team who put on the ceremony, uh, it, to include, I'll just name a few, Lieutenant Colonel Bullock, uh, Lieutenant Flaw, Master Sergeant Caudill, and the countless other volunteers that I have not mentioned by name, but Dave did cover that. Um, it's difficult to fathom the magnitude of work and the hours you've all invested in this event. Uh, thank you so much for everything you've done to make this ceremony special. To my family, Dad, Carol, Kathy, Dan, Liz, Ben, Tim, Steph, Dustin, and Katie, thank you for traveling all the way from Pennsylvania to be here uh, with us here in Colorado. It means so much to have you here in person. A special thanks to our son, Sergeant Mason Clock, for taking leave and making the trip from Alaska to share in this day. We couldn't be prouder of you, and we can't wait to witness your future accomplishments. Thank you to my mother-in-law and frequent dog sitter, Betty G. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. To our great friends, Jonathan, Morgan, Madison, Zach, and Ashley, uh, thank you for taking time off work to spend the afternoon with, us, uh, with our extended military family. I'm guessing none of you have witnessed uh, this kind of ceremony before, so I can only imagine some of the thoughts and feelings that might be running through your minds uh, today. We're thrilled you were able to join us. Uh, Ms. Jonna Reeder Claymeyer, Ms. Katie Hatton, representatives from senior, sorry, Senator Bennett and Congressman Lamborn's offices and the representatives from the cities of Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek in the audience, Thank you for, your, for attending and for your continued support to the military personnel and their families who are fortunate to call Colorado home. To the Fort Carson Garrison leadership, Colonel Brown, Command Master Sergeant Mortensen, it's great to see you, the Army represented here. Hua. Chief Simmons, thank you for attending today. To all the leaders and members of U.S. Space Command, NORAD, U.S. Northern Command, we appreciate the excellent partnerships. Major General Retired Leonard, I'm grateful for your attendance today. I, I also saw Retired Brigadier General Tim Coffin in the audience, so thanks for being here. Lieutenant General Miller, thank you, and thanks to our Chief of Space Operations, General Saltzman, for this opportunity. Jen and I are honored you've entrusted us with the continued excellence of Space Base Delta One and the professionals who make the mission happen. We pledge to take great care of them and their families. I look forward to working with you and your team in support of critical space missions. Brigadier General Paul, Dr. Keel, your presence is appreciated. I'm eager to begin collaborating. Colonel David Hansen and Mary, the Delta is flourishing because of your leadership. You have strengthened the missions, the installations, personnel, and families of Space Base Delta One, and I'm ready to carry that responsibility. Thank you for assisting Jen and me during this transition. It was 2006 when Jen and I and our children first ventured west to Colorado Springs. We were a much younger Army family back then, and I had just been selected to become an Army Space Operations Officer after serving as an Armor Officer for the previous 16 years. 
we found a home here within the Army Space and Missile Defense Command, and, and, uh, and, but also among the Air Force Space Command personnel at the time, many of whom we have maintained close relationships. Over the following 17 years, we found ourselves moving back here multiple times uh, to Peterson and to Schriever, assignments at 1st Space Brigade, Space and Missile Defense Command, Joint Force Space Component Command, U.S. Space Command, and most recently, the National Space Security Institute. When the Army moved us elsewhere, I still found myself TDY in Colorado Springs quite often, especially in my roles as the Space Support Element uh, Chief to U.S. Army North, which is the Army Service Component to U.S. Northern Command, and as the Director of the Joint Integrated Space Team to U.S. Central Command. But for the times we were stationed here, we often chose to live on Peterson, Peterson Base housing. And I calculate that we've lived here on this base for a total of six years so far. Um, we're thrilled to be able to command here in the place that we love and have grown to consider our home. I'm a product of my past, and I fully embrace both my Army upbringing and the fact that I transferred into the Space Force only just two short years ago. Despite the very Air Force look of the uniform that I'm wearing right now, I acknowledge I've never served in the Air Force. Similar, but inverse to my own situation, I know the majority of the space-based Delta I service members are airmen, ser serving on a Space Force base, supporting space and homeland defense missions. Regardless of our backgrounds, we are all one team, and our diverse experiences make this team so much stronger than it would be otherwise. Now a Space Force organization, Space Base Delta I was built on a foundation of Air, Air Force Command structures, but it is still young and evolving. I will absolutely count on the women and men, airmen and guardians alike, to continue to enhance the organization to ensure we provide excellent base support to the Deltas and the mission partners that conduct combat operations from each of the seven Space Base Delta I installations. The United States Space Force relies on your unwavering support, and indeed, the entire nation depends on each and every one of you. You enable these critical space missions across the globe. I'd like to finish with a few additional and special words of appreciation from Jen and me to our children. Your support over the years has been invaluable. Despite not choosing to grow up as Army brats, moving and changing schools one, every one to three years, uh, I hope your military upbringing has given you meaningful skills and perspectives that will serve you well for the rest of your lives. Your mother and I love you very much. To my favorite person in the world, Jen, with all that I have, thank you for everything you've done to raise our children and support us along our Army and now Space Force journey. Uh, we have so much more ahead and I look forward to sharing this new adventure with you. And finally, to the, to the women and men of Space Base Delta One, Jen and I look forward to working with and for each and every one of you. All policies and procedures remain in effect. Aim high and semper supra. Thank you, Colonel Clock. At this time, and on behalf of the Space Base Delta One family, we present Mrs. Jennifer Clock with a bouquet of yellow rosebuds. The yellow rose symbolizes tender friendship optimism, and new beginnings. Closed rosebuds symbolize the welcoming and hopeful atmosphere about to unfold, just as it will with the guardians, airmen, and families of Space Base Delta I under the new leadership. <laughs> On behalf of the airmen and guardians of Space Base Delta I, thank you for joining us. Please stand for the playing of the Space Force song and the departure of the official party.
please be sure to congratulate Colonel Clock and his family at the reception, which will take place in the main ballroom of the hub, where food and drinks will be available. <laughs>